Chapter 3 Arya stood alone in a library more amazing than anything she could have ever imagined, certainly unlike anything she would have expected to find in a cave at the top of a mountain. Arya had followed the boy meekly, shock, cold, and desperation inspiring more obedience than her father's violence ever had. He had led her up the mountain and through a hidden tunnel, finally guiding her to a fire where she could warm herself after her long stay on the mountainside. Then he had left her. It was not long before Arya's curiosity overwhelmed her fear and she began to explore the room. The fireplace had a mantle tall enough for her to stand under, and there were candles all about the room. There was a thick rug on the hard stone floor and walls that gently sloped up, the shape just barely retaining reminders that this room was a cave. On all the surfaces that were flat enough to hold them, there were shelves of thick bound books and racks of scrolls. The spaces too irregular were covered with delicately embroidered curtains showing scenes of mountains and lakes. Arya had never seen anything like them. She had not even realized that embroidery could make pictures like that. There were two large chairs that were padded and covered with a cloth like the chair that Master Simon sat in at town meetings, though these were far nicer. Simon's chair had always reminded Arya of a saddle. Curves worn deep where the man's rear had made its impressions, and the thick fabric worn to a leather-like shine. These chairs had so much padding that they curved upwards like the sides of a barrel. But when she had pushed experimentally on the seat, her hands sunk deep into the soft padding. There was a large desk made of a smooth, dark wood, with complicated designs inlaid along the legs and edges. Dragons each one a little different, some curling up, some stretched straight out, some arching back like they were caught in the middle of a yawn, but all perfect little creatures carved with needlepoint precision into the hard wood. On the desk were more books and scrolls, plus piles of loose paper and vellum. Arya picked up one of the books before she thought better of touching a dragon's personal belongings. She could recognize no more than her own name in any script, but she was curious. A traveling bard had once told her all about books. The man had stayed in the village inn for over a month, and while he was there, had picked up a retinue of children who followed him everywhere, hoping for a tale or song. He had taught them all how to write and read their names. Arya liked to remember him as having taken a special interest in her, but truthfully, she knew she was only one of a half dozen or more that he had picked out to teach an instrument and a bit of singing. She had been young enough then that she had not been needed for anything at home, and her mother had been just as glad to get her out from underfoot. The bard had left with the promise that he would return, and Arya had carefully kept up practicing the pipes he had helped her make, and when those broke, made herself more. She had even picked up other children's instruments when they had abandoned them. She had silently dreamt that the bard would be so impressed when he came back that he would take her on as an apprentice— but by the time the man had returned, Arya had been old enough to be useful around the house. She hadn't had time to do more than tell him how happy she was to see him and play a song for him before her mother had rushed her back to the house. Arya had been thirteen then, old enough that she couldn't be left alone with a man, which left her at the mercy of her mother's free time. By the time she made it back to the inn, he was gone. When Arya had complained, her father had put her out of the house to fend for herself for the night. Girls her age didn't need to be wasting time on nonsense like stories and music. Alone in this strange library, Arya flipped through the book in her hands listlessly. Staring at the letters covering page after page made her eyes hurt and showed her no magical worlds, no strange peoples, no stories. With an embarrassed start, she remembered where she was. She felt almost guilty about her lack of fear, but it was hard to be scared in such a comfortable room. Arya forced herself back to sit on the low stool in front of the fire, making sure she hadn't moved anything out of its place on her way. After a while, she started humming a simple ballad out of sheer boredom, her fingers aching for the familiar feeling of her pipes. The song carried her away, and she opened her mouth to sing, but her voice sounded loud, startling her back into silence. She sat by the fire until it started to die. She was trying to decide if she should get up to rekindle it, if that would get her into trouble, when the boy wandered back into the library. Looking up at him, half expectant, half embarrassed, 
Arya thought he almost looked surprised that she was there, before the expression was schooled away to neutral. Are you warm enough now? She nodded. Well, I guess you can stay in the closet room. She was about to ask where this closet room was when he turned abruptly and pushed his way back through the door. She rushed to follow, hoping that was what he had intended. He said not a word as he led her down a long hallway, through a huge empty chamber, and back up another short hallway to a doorway. "'Your room,' he declared mildly, before brushing past Arya back the way they had come. It was nowhere near as nice as the library, but she had never had a room to herself, so it seemed both fabulous and lonely as she let the curtain fall back across the doorway. Inside the room was not much more than a bed set into the stone wall and a small chest with a few old bed linens. Arya sat in the bed, momentarily distracted by the fact that the padding was far softer than even her parents' straw mattress, and tried to cry. She knew she should be crying. She was in a place that she hadn't even known existed a few hours before, with a young man who seemed to think he was some kind of dragon. As far as she could tell, they were the only people around, and she had no clue what he wanted of her. She was probably never going to get home. If that wasn't enough to have a person in hysterics, her whole village had decided to sacrifice her to a dragon, and her parents hadn't even objected. No one had. As she was dragged from the village square, her father had told her to shut up and not make a fuss. But Arya did not cry. And after trying for a while, she fell back into the bed and hummed a lullaby to herself until she fell asleep.